Hey guys, it's Dark Architect 18 back here with another YouTube video and today we're doing the USS Massachusetts strategy video. So how to play the Massachusetts strategically. So just before I get into the, the video, I just want to say I do ship reviews, dev strike videos and much, much more. So before I start, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel. It really, really, really helps. And if you like the content and you like what I'm doing and want to support the channel, make sure to hit that notification bell to stay notified for all future videos and now it's time to actually get into it so we're gonna break down the commander we're gonna give an overall perception of how the ship plays and my take on it and then also some stats to it so first things first we got the commander we got Willis Lee with uh, inspirations of Franz von Hipper and ARP Haruna skills we have for Willis Lee are not one for nuisance, porcupine, firefighter, master mechanic, and will to rebuild. Our mods for the Massachusetts are secondary mod, damage control mod, concealment system, and artillery plotting room mod. So overall, it's mainly secondaries, health, duration in terms of the healing, and then also the main gun accuracy, which is pretty important overall. So with that in mind, we have the so we have the stats now. We're going to go over that. So the USS Massachusetts, we got 66,300 HP, 6 to 447 millimeters of armor, 50% torpedo damage reduction. We have 3x3, three three, 406 millimeter, which is equivalent to 16-inch guns. We have 17.5 kilometer firing range, 30-second reload. 45 second 180 degree turn time, 5700 max HE shell damage, 36% fire chance, uh, 13,100 max AP damage. Then we have a AA defense of 25 by 120 millimeter guns, 90 average damage per second, 2 kilometer firing range, 5 by 2 20 millimeter guns, 31 average damage per second, 2 kilometer firing range. And 15 by 4, 40 millimeter, 238 average damage per second with 3.5 kilometer firing range. And a 10 by 2, 127 millimeter gun with 151 average damage per second with a 5 kilometer firing range. So with the maneuverability, we got a 28 point knot max speed, which isn't too bad for the tier overall. We have also 710 meter turning circle radius. We also have a 15.7 second rudder shift time, which is pretty good for the tier overall. So with the concealment, we also have a 13.3 kilometer detectability range by C, 17.5 kilometer detectability after firing main guns, 15.3 detectability when ship is on fire, 11.1 kilometer detectability range by air, 19.3 kilometer detectability after firing main guns, 14.1 kilometer detectability when the ship is on fire, 2 kilometer guaranteed detectability range, and a 14.9 kilometer detectability when firing in smoke. So overall the ship is more of a brawler. Uh, you can technically build it for a sniper if you really want, but I would suggest if you're unsure at first and you're not quite acclimated with the ship, I would go with a secondary build because you're building on the advantages, the inherent advantages of the ship, which is its secondaries and its range, which currently I have 11 kilometer secondaries with this thing. And it's it's been really, really great overall as the games that I've played in it. And it just works very, very well. Not to say you can't do it with the sniper build. It just... You have the Alabama to do that with. So I think it just works best to use its strengths for what it is than to build it for something else. But that's just my opinion. Uh, so overall, we're starting out in the middle over here. We are going to be pushing up and towards the right and then towards the top of the map as we go. And looking left to right as we kind of go. So we have part of the team spawned to the left. And part of the team to the right looks like uh, C cap, I believe, the cap to the northeast of me. 
uh, has some support, but also the support is mainly towards the southwest. So typically, I try to support the side that needs the most help whenever I spawn towards the middle, and it's like domination. So we're capturing the bases. Um, so like A, C, and A, B, and C cap. So, and sometimes D cap. But basically what I try to do is get the caps. And then once you secure the caps, then that dictates whether you're going to win or not. Um, you know, if you can keep taking out enemies along the way and supporting your team and... Um, you know, calling things out to your team like fire on this kid, fire on this this battleship. You know, focus fire on this, and use your cover like your the the islands and the rocks and all this other things in front of you and angling as you need to. You do just fine. Um, you know, not every game is gonna be perfect, and you just gotta kind of adapt to it as it comes to you, and you just you kind of deal with it um and that's how you learn with these these ships um and that's how i've learned with the massachusetts it's kind of a give or take kind of thing so and that's the thing with battleships you got to understand is when to push when to kind of when to kind of stay where you are currently and when to call things out and focus fire on things so like what i did right there was focusing that cruiser right there which was a good call by me to take him out because he was just kind of out there off towards uh, C cap. So northwest of me in terms of position. So now we got some battleships off to the north and northeast. So we got Iowa and Colorado. So I'm going to shoot at this Iowa. Looks like he might be coming back in broadside. Uh, the... Colorado is still continuing on. Iowa looks like he's turning in slightly, and we get a pretty sizable hit right there. I'm going to slow down and turn in a little bit, expecting him to fire maybe in the next 26 seconds or so. Uh, I think Iowa's reload typically is around 30 to, or 26 to 30 seconds in general. Um, so that's just a good good thing to keep on your mind while you're playing the game um that's a lot of things that i do is i try to keep mental notes approximately of what people's reload are what range of torpedoes are and what everything is so that i can kind of have a idea as to what i can judge it could be and what i feel like they're built towards in terms of their actual build overall for their ship as you can tell if you know somebody's got a rudder build they're going to be turning really quickly compared to like if they got a secondary build on some kind of ship then you'll you'll notice it like right off the bat it, it's it'll start clicking your mind like this doesn't seem right like this guy's shooting this i was shooting in 20 seconds compared to like 26 or 30 like you just fired a solo like why is he doing that like you start asking yourself questions as to like why and how and does this make sense and okay it does it doesn't and it starts narrowing things down and you start becoming like a better play th player through that kind of a uh, thought process and it's not easy to think like that but it, it gets easier as you kind of play through it so kind of what I'm doing right here is angling between the Iowa, the Colorado, and the other battleship. So those three ships overall. So turn in a little bit. Uh, he temporarily takes my gun out. So I restore that. And taking a shot on this Iowa. It looks like he's turning away, which is smart on his part. Uh, we got the carrier over here. So we got Gneisenau, Iowa, Iowa on the right, Gneisenau in the middle, and Colorado on the left. So we're going to take shots at this Gneisenau, try to do some damage right there. You see the bigger picture right there with the map, how I looked at that. So it's kind of like a triangle effect right here. So, um, well, three ships, and they're all kind of 
at different angles in terms of where I'm starting at. So you could form a triangle either way to the left or to the right in terms of how it lays out. So I'm firing at this Colorado, seeing what we get. We get like 4K. We're sitting at 75,000 damage, two kills. Um, we're helping the team pretty good. We're pushing up. Um, I guess the thing that I could have probably done better is go after the caps, but um, I kind of push straight through the center, which isn't quite advisable, um, especially if a good enemy team. Um, if that was a good enemy team overall, I would have probably went around towards uh, the northeast in terms of A and B cap. So the two uh, red caps currently um, that they occupy, I'd go along that and then go north towards the top of the map towards a similar area where I am now and meet up and then that would just allow for more points for us um, and we wouldn't have to worry about points overall but you'll see that this ends still pretty well overall and it's just gonna show you can take it either way but always try to cap if you can if you can't then just you know, you live and you learn and you keep getting better as a player overall and you're like, okay, next time I'll just, I'll cap that and I'll, I'll, I'll watch that more carefully and you'll learn how to play better overall. So, so anyways, we got the Iowa right there. We got the carrier back in the corner, which is obvious. Carrier's going to stay in the back of the corner. You don't want to uh, take any heavy shots from any cruisers battleships or destroyers or anything in general so you stay back there as a carrier i was kind of trying to get me broadside and i'm trying to turn turn into him um so he's gonna hit me a couple times good here before i can try to get him out and i get him and the carrier's sh shooting torps on me he's trying to harass me as best as he can we got the Colorado out there, and we got the carrier back in the corner, so we're going to spin around again. We're pretty close on points. It's a 30-point difference, even though we only have one cap, and they have two caps, and we have four um, ships left, or now four ships left, and they have two ships left. So overall, pretty good game. We got three kills. We got a high caliber, 126,000 damage. Um, hope you guys enjoyed the video so far. Um, if you made it to then, make sure to hit that like button as well and hit that um, subscribe button. Um, I will be doing a giveaway for uh, 800 subscribers. Um, probably an Xbox gift card and a uh, PlayStation gift card. I'm yet to determine what I'm going to do exactly for that, but. Uh, once we get closer to 800 subscribers, I will be letting everyone know what that plan is and um, how I'm going to actually go about doing that. So, um, yeah, so let's let's get there um, and we'll actually give away some gift cards. So that's, that is going to be really exciting when we get to that point. But um, just want to say, if you like the video, make sure to like and subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell to stay tuned for the next video and yeah really appreciate everyone and all the support for the channel everyone liking subscribing commenting the whole the whole deal you know everything the good the bad everything it's it's been quite the journey and uh I really appreciate everyone that's you know stuck along for this journey and it's only getting better so, um, you know, I always love to show my support for people that are there for me and that do a lot for, you know, for the channel. So just want to say that and hope everyone has a good day. Thanks for tuning in. This is Dark Architect 18. I'm out. Peace.